What's up, Zoe Hills kids and everybody out in the internet world? I've got a question for you guys. Do you just ever feel like you have those days, or those weeks, or even months where nothing goes your way? I mean, you wake up and uh, your hair is a mess, you're late for school, you can't find your socks, you don't even have time to brush your teeth, so your breath smells bad. People aren't being nice to you. You just, the lunch in the cafeteria is terrible. You just feel like your day is ruined and things cannot get any worse. Well, the reality is we all feel like that. And sometimes it's small things like not finding our socks. And sometimes it's big, crazy things in our life. We're going to be talking about a story today. We're going to be talking about Job. If you know who Job is, he has a crazy story. So we're going to jump right into that story today, and we're going to recap it after that. So I'll see you guys later. Job was a wealthy man who loved God and wanted to follow God's plan. Job was honest. He feared God and turned away from evil. One day, God's enemy, Satan, went to God. God told Satan, no one else on earth is like Job. Job only follows you because you protect him and bless him, Satan said. If you take away everything Job has, he won't follow you anymore. So God gave Satan permission to take away everything Job had, but Satan was not allowed to hurt Job. Satan sent men to steal Job's animals. He caused Job's children to die. In one day, Job lost everything. Job was very sad, but he still followed God. Satan came to God again. He said, if Job gets sick, he will not praise you anymore. So God gave Satan permission to make Job sick, but God did not let Satan kill Job. Satan covered Job's skin with painful sores. Do you still have faith in God? Job's wife asked. Curse God and die. That's foolish, Job said. How can we accept good things from God and not trouble? <laughs> then three of Job's friends visited Job. Their names were Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They said, Job, if you do what is right and stop sinning, God will give you back everything you lost. I haven't done anything wrong, Job said. Job wished he had someone to talk to God for him. He wanted answers. He didn't understand why he was suffering. Had God made a mistake? Then a man named Elihu came to Job. God is greater than man, Elihu explained. God always does what is right. Finally, God spoke to Job through a whirlwind. Were you there when I made the earth? God asked. Are you the one who told the sea where to stop? Did you decide when the sun would rise or when snow would fall? Did you put stars in the sky? Can you tell the eagles when to fly in the sky? Job could not completely understand God's plans, but he could trust God. God is all powerful, sovereign, and good. Job was sorry for doubting God. God gave Job back everything that he'd lost and so much more. Job learned that God is all powerful, sovereign, and good. When we face suffering, we can hope in God. God sent Jesus, the only truly innocent one, to suffer and die so that everyone who trusts in him can have forgiveness and eternal life. Guys, Job is one of the craziest stories in the Bible. It starts and it's Satan talking to God, right? That's crazy. That doesn't even seem right. But Satan thinks that Job, his faith is rooted in what he has. See, God knows Job's heart. Satan doesn't. But Satan thinks he can beat God and say, well, I'll just take everything from Job and he will hate you. Well, it happens. Job loses everything. His family, his riches, his home. He's covered in sickness. And the reality is, Job is miserable. Sometimes we like to be like, Job had so much faith. But the reality was, he was miserable. His friends, his wife... They all tried to give him advice to get better, but he didn't want any of it. In fact, he got so angry that he started yelling at God. He was so upset. But the reality is, 
he didn't hate God. He didn't turn away from God. He chose to still trust God. So the question is, guys, what do we do when we, in our life, feel like the world is turned against us? When things aren't going our way, whether it's a day where we can't find our socks and we got bad bed head and stinky breath and cafeteria is gross, or whether it's a day where, well, things go really, really bad. We lose somebody that's close to us. Maybe our parents move away to different houses. Maybe things just are really hard. You're feeling a lot of emotion. You're sad. You're upset. You're angry. You're anxious. Whatever. All the time. Maybe you're feeling all of these things. Maybe you're feeling one or a few. The reality is they can be so hard for us. So what do we do? Well, we can look at Job. And we can say, well, Job had a hard time. Job wasn't happy. He wasn't skipping around after everything had happened like, oh yeah, I'm so happy. No. So the first thing we know is that it's okay to feel. We are humans and we feel very real things. Your feelings are okay, but what we do with them is what's important. You see, Job's wife just gave up. She said, let's just give up. Might as well not do anything else. Job's friend said, well, you know, you could do this, this, and this. You could do all of these other things. But Job knew the real answer. Job knew the answer to really trust God. And he got upset, and he got angry, and he talked to God a lot. He even blamed God for some of it. And ultimately, God came to Job and talked to him. He let him know and he restored Job and his wealth and his family and everything that he had. Why? Because ultimately, despite being angry and upset and hurt and sad, Job still chose to trust God. So when we're feeling these things, what we need to do is we need to take them to God. You see, the difference between Job and us is that Job was before Jesus. Job was before Jesus had died on the cross and gave us a true connection with God. But we can talk with God at all times, in any place. He knows our heart and our feelings and our mind. And when we talk to him, he listens. He really, really does. And so the reality is, it may not make things better instantly. A lot of us want to think that we'll just get better in a snap and it'll be all good. But the reality is, as we talk with God, even in the hard times, and we trust in God, even in the hard times, And even when we're sad, we're crying, we're alone, we're angry, when we take these things to God and we tell him and we're upset and we're angry and we tell God that we're angry, he loves us and he will send peace and love and restoration. And as we've been talking about who is in control of everything, guys, God, God is in control of everything and nothing is outside of his miraculous We learned in the beginning that creation was made for God's glory and our good. And we have to trust that. That even right now, in your life, you can trust that. Because reality is, I'm facing it too, guys. See, my school messed up. And I was supposed to graduate. And I can't now. I have to wait. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to wait. I want to be angry and mad. And I am angry and mad. But instead of taking it out on other people, instead of being angry at God, I'm trusting that God knows what he's doing. Even if it doesn't seem fair to me that I have to wait a whole nother year to graduate, I can trust God. And so can you with whatever is going on in your life. So trust God. Trust his promise. Talk to him and talk to others who can help you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today. We are going to start a new section next week. I am super excited about it, guys. As we get ready for the Christmas season, we're going to have a ton of fun. I can't wait. Until then, I will see you guys later. Bye.